as simple as it sounds when I was first, um, when I was first sitting down, sitting down for the first time to start learning how to program a game. Um, the thing that uh, I found most elusive was just figuring out how to open up a window and put a simple image in that window. So like a game character or something. So this was quite a milestone for me when I, when I started to wrap my head around how this works. Um, and fortunately it didn't take too long before I found this library called STL, Simple Direct Media Layer. And it was, um, it offers a, a bunch of things that allow you to do this without too much pain. Um, if you are watching the series by Casey Muratori called The Handmade Hero, early in the series he, he gets started with this and he does it um, just with C and using the Windows API. Uh, SDL, my understanding is uh, it kind of smooths over the differences um, that you see in different operating systems. So Linux, um, Mac, and Windows. They all have different ways of opening windows and, and rendering images to those windows. Um, but STL kind of smooths all that out and gives you one API to get this done. At least that's my understanding today. Uh, so I thought, um, you know, I wanted to follow along with uh, KC almost exactly, but I'm on Linux. And so I figured, all right, I'll, I'll cheat a little bit. And I thought I'd use STL2 to kind of uh, help me get a head start. I mean, the... The OS layer, I suppose, of a game maybe isn't such a big deal anyway. I'm more interested in jumping into learning how to program gameplay and stuff like that. So um, this kind of gives you a nice head start in at least, you know, getting things started. Uh, so I want to walk through this really, really simple example that I've done. Uh, it doesn't include moving a character around or anything like that. Um, but it's just the way that I figured out how to open up a window and put, um, put a, a little PNG character on that window. So I'll walk through it and hopefully this will help you. Um, I'm using the Odin programming language, so I won't walk through every little thing here, but uh, at the top here, I'm importing the um, the Thump package, which just helps me print different things to the console when I'm running the program. I generally always import that because it just helps me debug things and understand things a little bit better. And then I'm importing the STL2 library uh, as well as the image, I don't know what you'd call this, the sub package, SDL and SDL image, and I'm giving them uh, custom names right here, okay? So I can reference them throughout my code um, in a way that I just like it. Uh, and then I start with some constants at the top. So I've got my window title, uh, the XY position, and then the height and the width. Now, if you're wanting to maybe change this around a little bit and you're wondering where I'm getting all these, you know, um, these constants and, and, and functions and all that in the uh, Odin vendor documentation for STL2. Uh, you can find it right here. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go through this and, and read through it um, and, and hopefully um, get a better understanding of what's actually happening here. I'm still learning STL2. Like I'm really just scratching the surface. So I can't explain much right here. But um, for example, at the, at the top here, we've got... Uh, the window flags. Uh, I've only tried a couple of them, like full screen and shown. I really don't know what it does, but it works. So I'm just going to go with it. But anyway, I'll give you this link and you can deep dive a little bit more if you'd like. Maybe in future videos when I have a better grasp myself, I'll be able to under, uh, explain things a little bit better. So on top of this, uh, you also have, there's some other resources for learning SDL2, like uh, the official website and the wiki. And there's some good tutorials online see if I've got it opened here. LazyFoo, uh, lazyfoo.net. It's got some really good tutorials on using SDL too, uh, but it's with the C or C++. I'm, I'm not sure how much C++ is in here. So it's a little bit different, uh, but still you can understand the library a little bit better uh, if you read through that as well. Anyway, for a bare, just a simple, simple um, demonstration here is what I've got here. Uh, the windows position undefined um, will center the window. I figured that much out. Now to uh, to get the player on the screen, um, I've got a couple of structs here. One for the entity, so it's kind of like a general structure to capture the texture, which is like the image that can be manipulated, um, the source, and the destination. I'd like to explain this a little bit. Um, because it took me a bit to wrap my head around, and I, I may still have it wrong, but this is my current understanding, that you've got your texture, so your picture, uh, let's say your little character sprite, icon, whatever, um, 
and you've got the source, which is uh, like a sprite sheet. Okay, maybe I can open it here. Uh, open it, uh, assets. So this one right here, so we have, I can zoom in. No, I can't zoom in. Yeah, so you've got multiple um, images of the sprite and they, the, the movement is a little different. So to make a character move, you just kind of go through the different um, sprite sections. So the source would be like, what, which part of this sprite sheet am I wanting to show? And so in this case, I'm grabbing the first one here, which is, oh, zoomed a bit too much there which could be when I'm loading it, I'm going at zero, zero. So X, Y, zero, zero, so that's at the top. And uh, the width of the section that I'm grabbing is 24 pixels and height 38 pixels. So I'm grabbing this Bardo right here at the top left. And then, so that's my source. What am I getting? Uh, and then the destination, where do I want to actually show that on the screen? So I've got source and destination right there. So when I'm creating the character, uh, when I'm putting it on the screen, I'm, uh, I have to choose both there. Let's see here. Okay, and I'll get through that again in a second here. Uh, and then I create a context struct. This is just um, something that I saw in the uh, example code of different projects created with Odin. Uh, it's just a global variable where I'm uh, storing the window, the renderer, and the player. So the player, uh, the window, and the renderer. I'm not entirely sure of all the nuances of this but basically this is the window you're creating and then the renderer it seems is what's used to actually like render uh, images and things like that on that screen so i just created um, these two like this just copying examples that i found online in different um, c tutorials uh, oh i skipped here uh, i have to initialize sdl and then sdl image which out of the box i can put a, a bmp file a bitmap file image on the screen but PNG, um, I have to initialize it like this. So you just initialize a uh, steel image and you initialize the PNG type. And you can you can initialize multiple types here, but I'm mostly working with PNG. So that's why I did that. And then after I have all that created, uh, then I can create the player itself. So I create the entity struct here. This is the texture that I'm loading. The player image is um, in the assets folder, Bardo PNG. I create the texture. And then I keep that texture, the source, which I just explained a moment ago, and where I want to put him, the destination, which you know I just chose 100 by 100. I made him uh, height and width uh, twice as big as the actual image. And you know, of course, you have to make sure your assets don't look funky when you do this. But I just made it twice as big, and uh, I save that in the global variable, um, the global context struct uh, in player. Now here's where we actually start doing stuff. I put a little bit of boilerplate here to grab onto the event. So an SDL event would be uh, like a key press on the keyboard, a mouse click, something like that. So you're pulling for the events in the game loop. So this is just an infinite loop until we break out of it. Like the event type is a quit. So you're clicking the X on the window, or I believe it works for escape as well. I have to test that out. Uh, and then it'll break the game loop and then once the game loop is broken, and I'll just uh, collapse that for a second so you can see, uh, then we destroy the window and we quit, which will clean up all the assets and memory and stuff like that. So we're pulling for events. If we have a quit event, then we break the loop. If we have an event like a key down or a key up, then we can do uh, certain things. And I'm just going to leave that part as is, uh, because in future videos I'll cover more on how to get input from the keyboard, move the character around, stuff like that. But that's enough for now. So after you're checking for events, uh, sorry, go down here, uh, then we're rendering the copy. So what this means, um, Casey Mortori has a really good explanation, uh, and I'll see if I can track down the part in his videos where he explains, um, you can't just be printing stuff to the screen in real time. The, the, um, in game programming, you have like two screens. You have uh, one that's your working copy where you're painting the scene, putting characters on there and stuff like that. And then you have the one, um, with the, the players actually seeing at any given moment of time, in time. And when you're updating your scene, you're updating the one that isn't seen yet. Uh, it's kind of in the background. And then, uh, what does he, I think he calls it like flipping. You, you flip the images so that once you're done painting the new scene, you flip it with the old, and that now becomes your new scene. So they see it in its completeness, not being drawn bit by bit. 
and then you start when you are updating the next one you you start working on the other background copy again so that's how i'm understanding it so with render copy that's you rendering so in this case my player uh, on the background copy that isn't quite viewed yet okay it's being worked on in the background when you actually want to present it or flip the images um, then you use render present and then you just present the render in its entirety there and then after that i clear the old renderer now why do i clear it here and not at the beginning some examples show clearing it in the beginning before you start rendering a new copy um, i started doing it this way because after watching some of casey's videos he makes the point of so many people think that it's like a distinct step you update character positions and then in another entirely different step distinct step you start rendering your your new scene and he argued that uh if you can, it's better to start painting your new scene right along with the updated positions, just so they stay close together. It's a little more, a little easier to make sense of that. And often you can avoid um, going over arrays of things. So arrays of, let's think of a game like bullets or characters. Or, you can avoid going over those entities more than once if you can render the copy at the same time you're updating positioning. And that may make no sense to you at this point if you're brand spanking new like like I am. Um, but there you have it. Maybe you come back to this and it'll make sense later. So that's why I clear the old one after the new after it's been presented, after it's been um, flipped to the new one. Okay, because that allows me to render a copy throughout the code wherever I want, wherever it makes more sense, uh, and not have to worry about it being cleared right before it's presented. You see. Uh, or cleared, sorry, right before uh, rendering new stuff. So that's why I have it that way. Anyway, so what does this actually look like? Um, so I clear this. I just run, I'm in the, the folder, of course, where the program is. I do odin run uh, dot to, to make sure it grabs any files that I'm using. And it opens my window, and there's my little character. That's Bardo right there. I can't move him yet, but we'll do that in a future video. But you can see the title up there too, some game title. And it, it was centered, and that's rough, That's the, the height and the width that I, I, I chose. And let's see. i, I got to check if escape works. Escape? No, I have to quit it, and then, it, uh, then it'll close. So yeah, play around with that a little bit. Uh, see if you can even jump ahead and find some examples of taking keyboard input and making the character move around, and uh, then compare how you did it with how I will show. Um, my approach in future videos and we'll see if we uh, can't come up with a, the best way to do it for our little example anyway anyway thanks for watching hopefully this is helpful and getting you started it's exciting stuff it's a neat milestone when you can get this done so hope you enjoy cheers